Hey, it's the preacher, and we're back in the kitchen today. Um, went out yesterday and caught some crappie. Did a video on it. It's called Fall Crappie. If I ever figure out how to put a link to those, maybe I'll put one of those cards or something in here. I may just put a link in the description. But anyways, I filleted those crappie last night when I got home, and here's a crappie fillet. Um, these aren't giant crappie, but these are the size I like to eat. Uh, I've caught some really big crappie, like 16 inches, and they're fun to catch. But their fillets are like that thick. And for what I'm going to do, I would rather have the thinner, not baby, but nice size crappie fillets. Anyways, my preferred way to eat crappie is to roll it in cornmeal, drop it in a fryer, pull it out, fry some hush puppies, some french fries, some coleslaw, and that is... That is a meal fit for a king. Problem is, I'm trying to cut back on my carbs. And I don't want to talk about my diet, but I'm getting too big to fit in the frame. So I want to lose a little, little weight here. So last year, I started baking crappie. First few times, it did not turn out good. I mean, it was edible. It was, it was fish. It was baked. But when you're used to eating cornmeal and you're used to eating, uh, even if you get like, go to a restaurant and you get, or a buffet and you get baked fish, it's got those breadcrumbs on top. And I'm trying to cut all that out. So here's what I've come up with. This is my recipe for baked crappie. I flayed this last night. I soaked it in the uh, fridge. I put it in a bowl of water, added some salt. Salt draws out blood, so you get these really nice white fillets. I laid it out on a Baptist newspaper with some paper towels over it. The Baptist newspaper catches the water. The paper towel keeps the Baptist newsprint, which wasn't fit to read anyways, and I don't want it on my fish. It keeps it from sticking to the fillets. So I've got them dried of their water, but I need to put a little oil on them. I want oil on them so they don't stick and so uh, to the pan, but so that the seasonings that we're going to put on them stick. So I'm going to put them in a bowl. You could brush oil on them. Here, let's get this stupid Baptist newspaper out of the way. I'm a Baptist, just not that kind of a Baptist. I'm going to use um, avocado oil. It's supposed to be good for you. And you don't need a lot of oil here. Just need enough to kind of get everything coated. It's supposed to be good for you, but at the Sam's Club... It is, uh, I think, like $7.99 for that big bottle. And uh, that's about half the price of olive oil. And to be honest with you, I like the avocado oil as good as olive oil if I'm cooking stuff or frying stuff. Okay. I have got everything lightly coated in oil, including my hands. Here I have a foil pan, and I have a rack somewhere, I have no idea where, that goes in this foil pan. And I use it, I think I left it at church. But I also have this grill grate. And uh, that's all I could come up with, but it sets right down on the pan. And there's going to be some liquid come out of this fish. So I lay some spoons, yes, six spoons on there to hold it up. This may ruin the whole thing. I don't know how... I don't know how well this is going to release. It feels kind of rough. It's kind of like expanded metal. My little rack is pretty good. So I got to improvise. Okay, I caught the crappie. I cleaned the crappie. The crappie's ready to cook. I'm hungry. This is what I had to come up with. So I'm going to take the crappie and I'm just going to spread these flays out on this rack. All these flays are about the same thickness. When I caught these fish uh, last night, they were all about the same size. I threw back some smaller ones, and uh, the main reason I was throwing them back is I only wanted to keep four or five or six for us. But by keeping them all the same size, they cook roughly all the same time. And that's what you want when you're baking fish. Otherwise, you're going to end up with some that are, some that are tough, some that are... Uh, overcooked and some that are not so here I have 10 crappie fillets 
lightly coated in oil. Let me wash my hands. We'll come back and uh, I'll mix up the seasoning we're going to put on top. All right, for the seasoning, I don't have any exact measurements. I just kind of go by what I've been doing in the past. The primary seasoning that I'm going to be using for this is Louisiana Cajun seasoning. Um, I had some Slap Your Mama. Yeah, Slap Your Mama. I like it a little better than this. I just don't have any right now. Let me close that up and we'll shake it up. Bust it up good. This is going to be the base for our seasoning. I kind of want these to be Cajun crappie fillets. So I'm going to put that out there. So there's some Cajun seasoning. To that, I'm going to bump up the garlic a little bit. So this is Lowry's garlic salt. And I'll put this right over here to the side. Alright, there's Lowry's garlic salt. Lowry's seasoned salt. I usually put this in there, but the Louisiana has a lot of salt in it. So does the garlic salt. I'll set it aside. This is my, um, this is my homemade chipotle peppers. This is basically jalapenos that have been smoked and then dehydrated and ground up. These are paprika peppers that I grew in the garden and dehydrated and ground up. They're not hot. They just kind of give you more of a, I wouldn't call it a bell pepper taste, but a, a sweet pepper taste. And then this is going to be our heat. The, the uh, chipotle powder has a little heat, but this is my homemade dehydrated ground up red cayenne pepper. And I'm going to put a pretty generous amount of cayenne on there. And that's what you end up with, okay? And so I'll kind of put it out in ratios. The main seasoning, Louisiana, garlic salt, and then I kind of go smaller amounts of pepper. Now the way that I like to apply it is I take an empty spice container. This is a McCormick pickling spice. Uh, I emptied this the other day when I did the um, corned deer meat that's in the fridge marinating right now. I put it on a paper plate for this exact reason right here. I can take the plate and fold it and make a cone and then just tap it with my finger and pour it all in there. Now if you like doing dishes, if you like doing dishes, get you a bunch of them little round bowls and stuff. If you like eating, then get you one of these and don't, don't, don't waste all that time. Okay, so now that it's in there, I'm going to put the lid on there. And I'm going to shake that till it looks uniform. I want everything thoroughly mixed. Now, we've got these coated in oil. They're up off the pan sitting on spoons. I hope, I really, really hope they don't stick. Now, we're going to put the seasoning right on top. got a pretty good seasoning setting on the top of them. They're coated in olive oil. The oven's at 400. I'm going to show you what they look like and then we're going to stick them in the oven. All right, there you see the flays and mainly the seasoning. I, I mean, you can get it. Just remember, as you get to the edge of these flays, it gets thinner. It doesn't need as much seasoning. So keep the bulk of it in the middle and feather it out as you get to the edges. Let's stick this in a 400 degree oven. Let me give you a look. <clears throat> They smelling good. Still look a little wet. Let me pull them out and check. Nope. Okay, I checked it. I went back and checked it again. At, the first time we looked at it, it was 10 minutes. I went back at 15. Now here we are at about 18 minutes. And it's starting to break apart. When I pick it up, it'll just kind of barely hold up and then it'll flake apart. That's where I want it. If you want it a little drier, if you want it a little more done, then 
go for 20 to 22 minutes. This is 18 and this is about where I like it. All right, I cooked this 18 minutes. And that is, uh, that's cooked enough for me. Now, I'm not saying it's raw by any means. It's, it's falling apart, flaking apart, but I like it to stay together. See how I can pick that up with a wide fork? Uh, it just started breaking when I set it down on my plate. That's about the way I like it. That's one of the thicker pieces. The thinner stuff, see, it's, it's going to break. If you can't have it fried and you don't have a fancy blackstone grill where you can do it blackened, I love it baked as long as you spice it up. Adding all of that pepper to the Louisiana Cajun seasoning really gives this a nice spicy taste and it's my second favorite way to eat crappie behind fried and cornmeal. Mmm. Alright, it's time to turn y'all off and I'm going to wear this crappie out. So to recap what we did, dry it. I soaked it in salt water. You don't have to do that. Just get it dry. Get all the moisture you can off of it. Let it soak on a paper towel on top of some newspaper. Then mix your own seasoning. You, you can just do Louisiana Cajun seasoning if you want or any other, but I start with a base. And then I amp that up with my own dried peppers out of my own garden. Then <clears throat> coat it in oil, put your seasoning on it, bake it. If it's thin, check it in 10 minutes. This little thin piece that I accidentally messed up a filet with, it was ready at 10 minutes. The thicker pieces took 18. So check it at 10. If it needs a little more, go to 15. I pulled it out at 18. I'm going to turn the camera off and eat. Thank you guys for watching. If you're trying to cut back on weight and eat better or whatever, you're just trying to cut out fat, uh, fried foods, maybe you're just tired. Of, you've caught so many crappie, you're just tired of frying them. Try it baked, but if you're going to bake it, you got to kick it up a notch. you got to put some spice on it or it's just mush fish. This here, I can eat this. Thank you guys for watching.